Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm happy to be here. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the Board of Trustees for the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy, Your Excellencies, my colleagues from the tourism and hospitality industry, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Permit me to express on behalf of His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, Dr. Anes Baikoma, the government and people of Sierra Leone, my sincere and profound appreciation for giving Sierra Leone, post-war country, an opportunity to address you today. Mr. Chairman, I will start my speech by providing you with a brief background about Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone is located in the west coast of Africa with an area of 73,326 square miles and a population of 6 million, with a GDP of 2.3 billion per year US dollars. Agriculture is the main economic activity of Sierra Leone, with export earnings provided by diamonds, rutile, bauxite, and iron ore. The tourism sector is promising and a potential contributor to the socioeconomic development of the country. Sierra Leone is a unique and fascinating destination, blessed with a landscape of extraordinary beauty, rich and diverse, tropical wildlife, miles of pristine, unspoiled white and golden sand, with an interesting history and heritage. The climate is ideal for winter sun seekers. These attributes have attracted the attention of major tour operators, travel writers, and the country has been classified as one of the 10 top tourist destinations in 2009 by Lonely Planet magazine and as described in the recently published Brandt's Guide. The country's tourism and portfolio comprises 31 protected areas with unique wildlife including the pygmy, hippos, chimpanzee, jungle elephants, rare species of birds, 18 national cultural heritage sites, one of which is the Bons Island, which is, the, which is linked to the country's rich past slave trade and home for returning slaves. Opportunities for big game fishing and bird watching attract the high spending ecotourism clientele. The country's proximity to Europe of only six hours, eight hours from the United States, and three hours from the 15 countries of the West African subregion makes it a destination in an advantageous position of no jet lag for tourists and business clientele. Building on these advantages, visitor arrivals have increased from 26 percent, from 28,000 by 26 percent, from 28,463 in 2002 to 38,615 arrivals in 2010. 33% of visitors were mainly the business market, while 20% account for leisure visitors. Therefore, there is considerable opportunity to develop the leisure market, which is highly needed to boost bona fide tourism. The increase in visitors' arrival has led to increased bed capacity from 1,000 in 2002 to 3,300 3, in 2010, offering various types of accommodation facilities. Currently, the tourist industry contributes approximately $26 million in the economy and is expected to rise fivefold to $100 million in the next five years. In order to ensure that this sector moves away from its previous unplanned activities, a new tourism strategic action plan was validated and adopted in October 2010. The plan aims to encourage the private sector to plan a pivotal partnership role with governments in reforming the industry. This strategy will also provide a roadmap 
to the development and promotion of ecotourism and create viable tourism development clusters of services and products. Recent government reforms by easing the process of doing business in Sierra Leone, better investments and incentives, reforms in the, revi in the Revised Income Tax Act and the Development of Tourism Act has facilitated the growth of the industry in the tourism sector. There is also in the offing a new Investment Promotion Act that will provide better and improved incentives to support the sector. Improvement of the infrastructural developments, such as good road networks to the tourist sites and attractions countrywide, better telecommunications facilities, building the capacity of the workforce. The recently launched Bumbuna Electricity Dam will further enhance the country's growth. Furthermore, the involvement of the investment climate facility in the areas of airport upgrading and facilitation and the land registration projects are indicative of government's commitment to provide the enabling environment. Opportunities for investment in the tourism sector in Sierra Leone. The Ceylon tourism industry offers wide range of opportunities to local and foreign entrepreneurs to invest in the following areas. Small medium hotels and resorts located around ecotourism attractions and sites in areas such as Otamba, Kilimi, National Park in the north, Tiwai Island in the southeast, the Loma Mountains, Gola Forest in the east, and the western area, which possess pristine white sandy beaches, ideal for beach resort development. Development of ecotourism lodges and campsites throughout the country is very, very important to the development of the industry in Sierra Leone. Upgrading transfer facilities between the airports and the mainland through the provision of various modes of transportation, for example, new generation helicopters, fixed wing aircrafts, ferries, hovercrafts, other faster, safer, and adaptable boats to serve our riverine areas as Sierra has a good number of navigable rivers with exceptional tourist attractions. Investing and improving tour operating and handling agencies through partnership so as to serve tourists, visitors, needs in facilitation, tours to tourist attractions and sites, itinerary management, etc., cetera, are areas the government is looking at closely. Need to invest in diverse ancillary facilities such as restaurants, casinos, bars, and other entertainment centers are of type top priority right now as I speak. Current foreign and domestic investments in Sierra Leone. As a government, the challenges that lie ahead are significant because we realize the socioeconomic benefits of an enhanced tourism industry that will increase employment opportunities, generating of foreign exchange, increase revenue for government and poverty alleviation. Given the above consideration, government's target is to increase visitors' arrivals from the current 38,000 to 100,000 tourist arrivals. The tourist sector has been showing signs of recovery and has already attracted some investments from many foreign visit investors from Europe, United States of America, Middle East, Asia, and Africa. To be specific, the Chinese have invested approximately 25 million US dollars in the rehabilitation and construction of accommodation facilities such as hotels. Recent direct foreign investment has come from two Chinese firms under the umbrella of assistance projects. The first in the early 2000s came from the Beijing Urban Construction Group, which signed a lease contract with the government to rehabilitate and operate the 200-bed 
Government Bintumani Hotel. After a 10 million initial investment, the hotel opened in 2003. And another $5 million was invested to refurbish the facilities in 2009. The second Sino investment involved an agreement between Henan Gucci Agency to build a tourist resort along Lumley Beach in the western area. The first phase of this development has been completed at a cost of five million United States dollars. Currently, through the attraction of both local and foreign collaboration, collaboration in investments, two of the government-owned hotels, Mamiyoko and Cape Sierra Hotel, are under refurbishment, which will be managed by renowned international hotel chains, namely Radisson Blue and Hilton International, respectively. There has also been considerable efforts on the part of domestic investments in the tourism sector. For instance, investment by Sierra Leoneans in the construction of new hotels like Kimbima Hotel, the Thai Resort, Country Lodge, Hotel Bamoy, Wusum Hotel, Kabenda Hill Valley Hotel, and Loa, Loawa Resort in the Kalaun District. The government provides attractive duty-free concessions and tax holidays due to the positive impact these developments have brought to the economy. A study of the potential of tourism in Sierra Leone using statistics collected illustrates the magnitude of what would happen if the country were to increase accommodation by only 600 rooms. Foreign exchange earnings could increase from 26 million recorded in 2009 to 100 million in 2015. An additional 1,800 jobs could be created and local incomes could be expected to rise more than 12 million in 20, 2007 to 58 million in 2015. Tourism will increase its contribution to GDP from 1.1% to 2.8% in 2015 with the right investment opportunities and incentives. Rebranding strategy for Sierra Leone. In our quest to ensure these tremendous opportunities in the tourism industry are tapped, my country has undertaken various promotional and marketing strategies as a means of rebranding Sierra Leone from a post-conflict country to a country ready to do business. Some of the rebranding re strategies include production of promotional literatures and brochures of international standard, production of tourism documentary films, attendance at major tourism fairs in Europe, such as World Travel Market in London, the future in Spain, the map top Lisa in Paris, France, and now here at the ITB in Berlin. Organizing familiarization visits to Sierra Leone for tour operators, travel agents, travel writers, and journalists to have on the spot assessment of the country development is a priority for the government of Sierra Leone. Over the past three years, we have attracted a very good number of such categories of individuals, which has led to good and positive articles appearing in newspapers, magazines, and the airing of our tourism documentary films on major media around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, Sierra Leone um, has a profound need to encourage foreign investment. The private sector investment in the tourism sector, as mentioned, is a strategy that we know will encourage growth and promotion of the sector. To do so, we are prepared to offer the following incentives. The government is promoting the private sector development for achieving rapid economic growth and development has put in place policy guidelines for local and foreign investors' participation in the tourism sector. 
There is now a government policy towards investment in Sierra Leone. The revised investment code, which is considered to be a specific policy on investments. Within this policy, there are various incentives packages to encourage local and foreign investors' participation in the development and promotion of the nation's tourism industry. The Development of Tourism Act of 1990 makes provision under Part 5, Section 30 to 38 for tax incentives for potential investors in the tourism industry. Investment in upgrading tourist-related infrastructure in post-conflict Sierra Leone have begun to bear fruit, as evident in the interest demonstrated by both local and international investors in the development of tourism-related infrastructures. It is true that more, much remains to be done, and some of our challenges are to attract private sector investment in such related infrastructure, both domestic and direct foreign investment. The following are the investment incentive package stipulated in the investment policy review of Sierra Leone for the tourism sector. One, 15% corporate income tax limited to a maximum of 150% of eligible expenditures of the original capital invested for the first five years of the new investment. Two, investment allowance of 5% of the cost of the relevant assets in acquiring new assets of plants, machinery, and equipment, including automobiles and trucks and commercial buildings. Exemption from payroll taxes during the three years for up to six non-citizen employees with skills not available locally. Duty-free concession for new construction, extension or renovation of existing facilities applicable to building materials, machinery, or equipment. Five, the Tourism Act 1990, Article 37, gives discretionary powers to the tourism minister to grant further tax relief if it is deemed necessary to boost the, the growth of the sector with its multiplier effects on the country's socioeconomic development. Opportunities for investment in the tourism sector in Sierra Leone is still a virgin market. The tourism attraction in the country have been grossly underutilized. There is need for the development of adequate accommodation and other related facilities to meet the demands of the growth for international visitors to the country. In this regard, Sierra Leone will need significant private sector investment in the industry. Sierra Leone is an emerging tourist in this destination. It stands at a threshold of considerable potentials and opportunities. The Sierra Leone government, in recognition of the tourism sector as one of the economic growth sectors, is anxious and prepared to offer attractive incentives to domestic and foreign investors. Before I conclude, I would like to share with you my government's thinking on using culture in nation rebranding. In addition to my responsibility as Minister of Tourism, I am also charged with the responsibility for cultural affairs strategy. Recognizing that your institute has to do with cultural diplomacy policies, I will now provide you an overview of how culture is used in Sierra Leone to rebrand the country's tourism industry. Culture, which simply puts it's our daily way of life, has tremendous link to national branding, tourism, and international investment in a globalized world. Despite the fact that in a post-colonial world, particularly post-9-11 era, the world is increasingly divided along cultural lines. Different religious beliefs, value systems, traditions, and group identity which have been the primary source of tension and potential conflict within and among nations, nation states, communities, and localized groups, rather than political ideology, culture has been seen as a source for tourism promotion, hence a sector for development. Ironically, 
the rise in these culturally based front lines coincide with the adoption of UNESCO's Convention on the Protection and Promotion of Diversity of Cultural Expressions, which aims to increase cultural diversity in the face of growing, homogenized, increased cultural diversity. The fact that UNESCO is tackling that challenge reiterates the fact that the aspect of culture is significant in any nation branding, tourism, and international investment. Therefore, we should look at the overall strategy of nation branding, tourism, and international development as part of culture in the broader sense. Again, because of the importance of culture to these processes, it is but fitting for policymakers to reflect on the application of these global trends on the arts and on the dialectic between artistic practice and broader cultural development. Pursuing the integration of culture as an indispensable pillar of development policies by mainstreaming culture at the entry level, as well as the principle of cultural diversity and respect for such diversity as conditions for dialogue and social cohesion globally. Sierra Leone is pursuing this as a top priority in the context of delivering our culture as one. We want to approach both national and internationally the cognizance of poverty reduction strategies, sector-wide approach, and the joint assistance strategies in the development of the industry. At the same time, UNESCO should continue to engage in national and regional cultural policy processes, notably by providing advice and regional cultural policy, building the capacities of policymakers, programmers, and leading actors with responsibilities in the area of culture and innovative cultural policy formulation, especially in Africa and Latin America. Furthermore, Policymakers, states, and non state actors should consolidate the promotion of intercultural dialogue, in particular by expanding knowledge on the process of cultural interaction and building capacities to devise intercultural skills through existing practices. Significant flagship projects and initiatives in Sierra Leone, such as the Slave. Root Project, Bones Island, the dissemination and use of the general cultural histories of states should be encouraged. In addition, cultural mapping with indigenous people should be pursued with a view to developing materials to combat stereotype prejudices that are nourishing tension and conflict. Finally, States, non-state acts of the international community and UNESCO should provide, should promote interreligious dialogue as an essential component of intercultural dialogue with special attention being paid to combat stereotyping. Focus should also be placed on the multiplicity of stakeholders to be involved in the process in order for it to have these effects strengthen the contribution of culture for sustainable development, demonstrating the importance of exchange and dialogue among cultures for social cohesion and reconciliation in order to develop the culture of peace, which is the bedrock of development. Hence, for culture to be honest fully, as a vector for development, contribution to nation branding, tourism and international development, it is my conviction that the following strategies should be adopted. Strengthening the capacities of states and non-state actors in the cultural sector. The ICD can play an important role in this regard. Sensitize, mobilize, and educate young leaders by identifying, disseminating, and propagating ideas which promote cultural consciousness through national and international advocacy campaigns and interactions with the world at large. To promote traditional values in our educational system, 
provide outlets, centers, and opportunities for the promotion and implementation of culturally related programs, concentrate on the diversity of cultural expressions and the development of creative industries on one hand, and promotion of pluralism and intercultural dialogue on the other. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, currently, the economic environment in, is conducive. Infrastructural support such as better networks, improved energy stability, and improved fiscal and physical incentives are indications of better days for investment opportunities in Sierra Leone. I therefore enjoin you all to take an advantage of these opportunities and come to Sierra Leone, where such opportunities and potentials are enormous and collaborate with us in our developmental drive. Come to Sierra Leone, the hidden paradise waiting to be explored. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Minister. I think we have about a moment to take a question or two. While we're waiting for the next, we're getting ready for the next speaker. If we could take a question or two from the audience for the Honorable Speaker, and if we could give a, another round of applause, please. Who would like to start the minister out since she's virtually been part of the family for the last three days? I have, I have, I have a question, if I may. Go ahead. My question would be two things. Well, it's intertwined. I know part of the imagery promoted of Sierra Leone has come from, and just correct me if I'm wrong, one blood diamonds by DiCaprio and also the diamond situation. I know currently that Charles Taylor is being prosecuted, but there's a difficulty in trying to establish identity when people in a civil war loot and amass wanton wealth. It comes after corruption. How is this corrected within Sierra Leone moving forward, whereby those who are beneficiaries of such exploits or such loots would create the authentic identity of Sierra Leone and won't get thrown away or thrown up equilibrium of what happened in that phase? Well, first of all, I want to tell you that the Blood Diamond saga, as the whole world knows, is over. Now we call, we refer to the same diamonds as peace diamonds, because that is what we are engaged in. And the president has an agenda for change, which we are, all Sierra Leoneans are pursuing on the, at every level or every sector in the country. We know what happened, but we do not want the past to hold us from going forward. You know, we have put policies in place, taken measures that will, that will discourage behaviors like that in the future, and also to encourage, you know, well-behaved business people, you know, visitors, even Sierra Leoneans, to look forward to better days. Sierra Leone is full of, um, we, we are blessed with a lot of minerals and natural resources. You know, we cannot hold on to the 10-year war as an identity for Sierra Leone. We've passed that. Now we look forward to look at um, what we have, look at the investment climate that we could create, look at the agreements that we have previously have with investors who were in our mining industry, improve those, upon those agreements so that the, the, the country itself will benefit from these exploits of our national resources. And right now where we are, we are happy to be where we are now because we are enjoying peace and stability and we are trying to develop the country. Anybody goes to Sierra Leone now, you will see that the whole country is like a construction site. You know, the president is interested in making sure that there is access to every corner of Sierra Leone. So all our tourist sites, all of the mining areas, all of them are becoming accessible now. You don't have to fly an helicopter to go to Yenge Mine Corner, unless if you really choose to, if you can afford it, but you can go by road. So most of the bad things that happen, we're trying to walk past and look forward, you know, to a better Sierra Leone, which the 
president is working on. I'd like to thank the Honorable Minister, and again, thank you for making the adjustment during the day for coming on in the program. And also, just we must take note that she just held her brief in November 2010. So within five months, to be able to come and represent on an international forum, it does speak to why she's got those awards. Let's give her a big round of applause. Thank you.